Okay, right, hello and welcome back to another video. Um, I've just done an update to the particle cave level. Um, so if you haven't seen that, uh, do check that out in week two of the uh, development. Um, but one of the things that came up that was quite interesting this week uh, was this idea of a sort of advanced Fresnel. So that's what we're going to break down here. Uh, I'm going to talk about what Fresnel is, how it works, um, and then a few kind of more advanced techniques you might want to use uh, with doing kind of Fresnel type calculations. So um, I have here a rock. Uh, it has a normal map applied. And you can see uh, as we rotate around, we're getting this kind of like almost shininess to it. And that's the Fresnel calculation being applied. So what we're doing <coughs> is we're taking the pixel normals, so including the normal map, uh, and we're taking the camera direction uh, and we're saying, right, if we're facing directly at the thing, be black. If we're facing away from it, 90 degrees, uh, be white. And you get this kind of haloing effect. And it's really useful uh, for certain real materials, so uh, certain cloths. So you get a kind of velvet type shininess to it. Um, in fact, all materials have some sort of Fresnel component to them. Um, I've done some videos on PBR and have a look at those uh, if, if you want to kind of dig a bit more into how certain materials uh, kind of PBR works. Um, just search on the channel and you'll find that. Um, but it's useful here for kind of like glowing and magical effects. We quite often do a kind of um, edge rim light. Um, let me do it. It's very simple. So I'm using the Fresnel function uh, that's inbuilt. There's also this node here, Fresnel. Um, I never use this. It's awful. I don't know why it exists. It's horrible. Um, this one doesn't have the input, uh, or rather the default input in this is the pixel normals, um, but the default base reflection fraction input uh, 0.04, that is saying that we don't ever want to have pure black. Um, and that's what that value is giving us there. So um, maybe for environment or character art, if you want to have like a um, rim light or something, it's fine, but I don't know, it, it really bugs me. Because every time you use this in VFX, you want to fade to black 100%. You have to go in and change the defaults. Um, and also the power here, exponent is 5. Um, I don't know. Yeah. It's fine. You can use that node. I don't. I think it's awful. I much rather use the function. Uh, not least because I can open it up and have a look and see how it works. Uh, and you can see that this is using a dot product. Um, if you haven't done the dot product before, I've got a video about that. Go and check that out. Um, very powerful. Uh, mathematical uh, function uh, or operator, I suppose, um, for doing this kind of calculation. So, um, so what are we doing? Well, if I bring in the emissive color here, if we use the vertex normals, um, it's going to ignore the normal map, and we see we get um, that lighting calculation: black where we're looking at it, white where it's facing away. This is what the dot product is doing for us. Um, if we use the pixel normal, we'll get the normal map involved, which is really useful. That's really what we want. Uh, we can also take our normal map. Sometimes if we were using this to blend between two normals, uh, it might give us a error saying pixel normal invalid node, pixel normals used for normal input. You can't use the pixel normals that are calculated here it then in the calculations here. And so um, what we can do is we can take our normal map, convert it from tangent space to world space, and use that to do our calculations. So in this case, that would be um, exactly the same as if we plugged our normals and used pixel normals. Um, so if you can use that, if you're just doing this for kind of emissive, that's fine. If you were using a Fresnel to blend different normals, you can't use the normal pixel normal at the end to then sort of use it earlier before it's been calculated, if that makes sense. Um, but there's a way around. We can just take our normals uh, and use that as our output. And now we don't actually need a normal input because we've used the normals in our calculation. Cool. Hopefully that makes sense. Um, so what are we doing here? Well, again, we're using a, um, a contrast. We're giving ourselves um, Fresnel information um, where the normals are pointing away from the camera. We get white. Uh, and when we're looking at it, we get black. Very useful for doing kind of glowing magic type effects. Um, but we can check it a bit further. Um, rather than having it the same everywhere, um, one thing I quite like to do is what's called a double Fresnel, or what I call a double Fresnel. Uh, and that is to then do basically the same kind of calculation. So rather than doing um, just a single Fresnel calculation, I'm going to do it twice. So I've got a dot product here between the camera and the 
the normals. Uh, I've got another one between the sky direction or the skylight direction uh, and the normals. And so if I just preview this, um, oh, let's not invert it. Um, so now we've got a light direction coming from over there somewhere. There's our sun, there's our directional light. Uh, and that information is being passed into the material uh, and we're effectively doing a lighting calculation and so we can say we want the Fresnel um, that we've applied uh, and let's put my normals back in so I get this on the normals of the rock um, we want the the Fresnel effect that we already had and we want the lighting effect and we can combine the two together um, and it just kind of makes it a little bit more interesting and so now our Fresnel, our glow, it's still magical, it's still happening over here, but now it's also taking into account the um, the sunlight direction. And you can see it still has that there. Um, we could potentially invert the sunlight direction. And now we've got glow in our shadows. Um, so it looks a bit more, let's hide some of this crap from previous tutorials. Um, but we've now got sort of a bit of a glow around the base. Um, definitely still has that ethereal otherworldly magic effect um, rather than just being um, being everywhere and we could also kind of add back in a small percentage of the first for now let's do something like this and then add them just give it a bit more life so there's for now everywhere but then the sunlight direction means there's a second for now and we can get kind of a bit more interest to our materials and our effects, which I think is pretty cool. Okay, uh, that's great. That's not what we've used in the um, Particle Cave demo level though. Um, what I wanted to do was an elongated Fresnel. Um, and so if I actually load up the rock, let's turn that on. unhide everything hide this um, so this was the effect that I wanted to create um, values so in the particle cave example we're doing a kind of dynamic ice being projected onto rocks so you've got a point which is the coldest point and then it's going to kind of project that onto the surface so if the surface is facing the icy point or the cold point it's going to be icy but by just doing a single point it looks a little bit more like lighting it doesn't look like um, doesn't look like ice because ice would kind of wrap around so the coldest faces or the, the faces facing the point would be cold but then the ice would grow and so what I wanted with this idea of a kind of elongated Fresnel so I um, set up something a bit like this and so you can see here it's taking this point and doing a Fresnel calculation and this point and doing a Fresnel calculation and then if I just added those or blended those together, the midpoint wouldn't work. It would just be two points added. I kind of need to do all of the points along here as well. Um, and that's what this is doing. And that's why we get this sort of solid line here. And if I unhide, you can see on the plane, we're getting this kind of like elongated highlight, um, which is really cool. It works really nicely. So what am I doing? Well, the first sort of problem in this, um, the first sort of <laughs> hurdle to, to overcome in this uh, in this problem um, was finding the closest point on a line between two points. Uh, what do I mean by that? Well, if I just hide these things, so I've got two spheres here, uh, and I've got a blueprint, and it refers back to those spheres, and also this sphere here, point D, that's the smaller one between them. Uh, and what I want to do is I want to find the closest point on these two, or if I define a line uh, between these two points. I want to find the closest point to this and then find it on that line. Um, and you can see as I move this around, the small sphere is constrained between those two points. Um, and as it moves along, it's finding the closest point um, on that line that's been defined there. Now this, I just looked up the math for uh, on the math, math, math static stack exchange. Um, given a line and a point in 3D, how to find the closest point in the line, and uh, I won't go into the math. You can go and, and follow this. Um, but basically, if we take some vector maths, so we take one point, subtract the other, find a vector, do the dot product, a little dot, um, and then do it between this vector and this vector, and then divide it by this dot producted by itself. Uh, this will find the vector length, uh, the square of the vector length, um, if I'm getting that correct. Um, and so this will give us a value t, 
and t is a proportional value between 0 and 1 um, for how long or how far along that line. Um, hopefully that makes sense. Uh, if I open up the blueprint, that's exactly what I did. Just copied and pasted that maths. So I've got my points here, point Q, point R, and point P. Subtract one from the other, dot product them, uh, divide one by the other, and I've clamped it and inverted it to make sure that I'm getting zero at one end uh, and one at the other. And I'm just moving that position uh, along my um, along my line. So as this blueprint moves, the point here updates and it updates that sphere. And so you can see we're able to find the closest point on uh, on the line. All that data is then passed onto my material. If I open up the material, you can see it's doing uh, the same kind of calculations. So I've got point A and point B being driven by the blueprint, and also I had point D here as a debug point for a while. But rather than using point D, instead I'm using the well position of my vertex. So effectively, if I go back over here, if I look at my rock, maybe I'll open this up and open up my pen. Um, for this vertex here, the closest point is here. So it uses the Fresnel calculation from that point. From this one over here, the closest point is there. So it uses the Fresnel calculation from this point. Along the middle, this vert here, the closest point to this line is gonna be about here. And so we're doing a Fresnel at that point. And that's gonna be true all the way along here. And so each of these verts is kind of getting its own Fresnel calculation. Um, and that's where we're getting this kind of long elongated um, highlight. Um, so the, close, the closest point on this line becomes the point where the lighting calculation comes from. It's as if we've got, um, let's use a different color, um, a big long cylindrical light here. And so the closest point is the point that's gonna be imparting the most light. Uh, and so that point there is being lit by this point, by this point, and so on and so forth. And so this allows us to have this kind of uh, fake elongated highlight. Um, cool. Uh, in the material, basically there are now three calculations. Um, if I just do that. Um, so the first one here is doing it for every point between points A and B. Uh, and then the second one is doing point A, and the third one is doing point B. Uh, and if I just plug these in and show you, whoops, it's not very close both things. Apologies for the dog. Um, so if I just apply, there you are, this is point A. Uh, if I do, this one is now point B. And then this one is all the points between A and B. Uh, oh, no, that one. And there we are. And so, um, by combining three things together, taking the maximum value, we're able to get the uh, the highlight. Um, if I just do it on the rock, there we go. So this is the points between A and B. Um, if I bring this out, and so we want point A, point B, and the maximum of the of the three of them. And so um, and there we are. We get this kind of wrap around Fresnel. Um, which I've then just used as a mask to then apply where ice is. And so we're saying, right, this is the, uh, in the cave, this is the entrance, this is inside. I'm gonna maybe I'll go into the cave. And so we've got the cave entrance here, and then point B is now inside our cave. And so this has its own radius affecting the ice. Uh, and as I bring this point in, it's going to apply that as it go inside as well. So um, a really nice, way of uh, creating a kind of like, yeah, elongated Fresnel highlight, which I think works pretty well. So, um, cool. As always, any questions, any comments, anything you want to know about Unreal, please do reach out and let me know. Uh, big thank you to my patrons for supporting the channel. Um, yeah, uh, Fresnel calculations, dot products go and check out some of the background on it or um, have a go at thinking about how we can kind of like apply them multiple times or maybe in a bit more advanced ways such as this. Um, yeah, as always, big thank you for, yeah, patrons, supporting the channel, said that already. Um, and I'll see you all next time with more cool stuff uh, and more updates with um, the particle cave 